Hello, this is Hawk and Bean, and today we are going to be reading Backwards Level 371. The title of this level is Despondency, and I actually know because I found it through a random level, a random number generator instead of clicking on a random level this time. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until. Oh, wait, no. That's the outro. Oops. Let's just get right into this. A sigh of relief leaves the lungs. Survival difficulty, class zero. Safe, habitable, devoid of fear. The future, despite being something every being experiences, is something almost no so individual ever has full control over. Most humans may be able to change minute aspects about their own brief futures, the wider world and even the worlds beyond are something the average its population cannot even begin to control. Most small things out of their tax, such as illness of the grass, such as illness or tax, the larger elements like war and drought. The future is a cruel creature to all. For many, the impalpable nature of what's to come is a frightening, frighteningly morbid and existential concept, which makes most either intentionally or nothing about the subject, or subject their mind deeply within it. While it's neither side of the extreme or favorable, it is simply the two options and to most strive for, for their own benefit. Also. There's an empty room and a large hole to the void in level 371. Level 371 is a boundlessly massive monotone assortment of assortment collection of wide and convoluted idly shaped empty offices, all of which have their floors frequently interspersed with large gaping holes within the ground that drop into an ever expansive cloudy void. The disorderly array of rooms that can take any shape. No matter how simple or complex, just so long as the shape itself is Euclidean. The construct, the construction of the walls themselves is that of a typical plaster build, but with a smooth and durable texture and an indestructible figuration. The rooms, more often than not, are painted in mixtures of white, blue, gray, and yellow gray, interspersed with monotonous white. However, it is not uncommon for certain rooms to have sudden, random colors of paint, murals, artwork, or any variety of anomalous fixtures on the walls. The only form of anomalous decoration within level 371 that does not seem to appear as is any form of furniture which has never been documented or substantiated. Beneath the illimitable, expansive, empty, off-white rooms lies a similarly limitless, limitable old expansion of sky blue and cool gray clouds, whilst known and regarded by the wanderers as a void. The unbounded infinity below this level's central rooms is akin to the atmosphere of a terrain. The color of the sky as well as the extent existence of clouds within it suggests that the area of air has a breathable makeup suitable for respiration. <sighs> Void openings never take up the entirety of a rib's floor, and in extremely erratic cases do not appear in some quarters at all. Instead, these gaping openings below usually appear within the centers of these spaces with enough carpet or marble flooring to skirt around the middle of the hole. These openings do not contain any form of railing or protection to prevent oneself from falling into them. The air of walkable floor that remains is often wide enough to prevent tumbling inside these gaping Amounts of air. However, it must be noted that the openings within these rooms do sometimes break this unspoken rule. A hallway, a passing over the void with an elusive long hallway shaft. A baft it. What does a baft mean? Some may have no floor, only small breaches, walkways across the middle of the room, or others can have their walkable areas split in half by an uncrossable moat of void. From the words of every wanderer that has ever set foot within levels 371, 
The escape from the openings into the familiar abyss below is incredibly unsettling, inflicting an odd sense of fear upon those who gaze down. Most travelers who come to this level steer clear of the openings, regardless of the size, as the darting fear of tumbling head over heels into infinity is too great a risk to even try to peek over and look into. Should one fall into these holes, whether accidental or on purpose, the individual will closely be met with the underside of the rooms, as well as the sky blue air and gray, cool gray clouds. Many individuals, especially ones who have fallen through the, the beyond for minutes, report feeling very worried, anxiousness, and fears of mortality among a few timid individuals. Regardless of whoever or whatever is dropped into the openings, all items that ebb into the void are quickly returned and placed at a safe and comfortable distance away from the hole they fell within. That's not to repeat the process that was just undergone. This return travel, which usually retires a few moments after falling, can repeat in infinitely within any hole into the void one chooses to use. No life permeates in level 371's walls due to a complete lack of any perishable while drinking water as well as the fact that no two living beings are able to meet up within the same space. Since no two rooms have ever been recorded twice, it could be assumed that the infinite size of the landscape is a key factor as to why people are unable to interact with each other. As such, the only entity that exists within level 371 is yourself, as any other inklings of life are greater in infinity away from wherever you are positioned. And here's the edge of a void opening with a large empty room. Bases, outposts, and communities. For the exact reasons above, no communities can even attempt to flourish within this infinite multitude of rooms. In fact, staying within this level for more than a few days without proper er er comestibles and water can leave someone vulnerable to starvation or most likely dehydration. Attached information. Well substantiated, rumors among groups say that an unnamed water had found a rather large and exorbitant sash of food and water. It was found haphazardly at a crest or section of walkway suspended above a void. They say that a note was found very deep within the stash of goods, and what else the actual contents of the notes have been remixed and translated multiple times, the original note is believed to have had the following transcribed into it. The note. To whom this may find its way to? I'm not sure whether or not anyone will be able to find this note. I've met at uh, I've not met him a first time I I frequent visits to this landscape. Nor have I heard stories about teams or groups of people ever staying as one group when entering the scene itself. Still, though, I've decided to leave this cornucopia, lest anyone is somehow able to find it, should this place just be impossibly large instead of just supernaturally isolating. I hope this message can reach they can someday reach someone. Like most people from home, I am an avid traveler. I greatly enjoy venturing from Oddball Universe to Oddball Universe, as each scene I have ever witnessed has always opened up my eyes that shred an amount further, allowing me to see things that I never thought possible. Even in a nexus of worlds like here, many of the more close-minded, deathlit as friends look at this level, and what I prefer to call the air rooms, and cast it aside haphazardly, bringing it in a similar eye to the other levels of similar emptiness and shape. I, however, see a more sparkly and layered message that paints its dreariness with extravagance. It may very well be something only me and me alone has ever deduced, and may be far from accurate, but it's something that makes me adore all these rooms deeply. To me, this escape is almost that of a meditative tool that I adore to frequent regularly. A large, empty, and lonely place formed of architecture similar to what I feel familiar with, it also designed in a way that feels so alien. From the gaping holes in the floors to the odd inclusions along the walls and floors, to even the strange odd noise I, 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 I occasionally hear permeating the level. Oh. 
These features alone are enough to make the otherwise generic infinite office landscape feel more zen. Even with all of these features that catch my eye and make me feel at peace, it is without a doubt the void and its properties which show this landscape as my personal getaway. It is only within a piece of paper that I can even begin to spill my deep rooted issues in my life as I feel vocalizing them is a step too far than I would ever be able to take in my current state of mind. However, to dance around the subject matter while still trying to address it, the future is an ever approaching cruel demon. One that runs in my blood cold. Many take what comes in stride, or simply shrug off or bear or through any more is fortunate at tomorrow and the days after equate wit and wit. That, rather unfortunately, is not a superpower I was ever blessed with. I frequently find myself worrying about what's to come, especially in this nexus of worlds we all reside in. The possibility of injury or death to myself or others, the possibility of having to move, run out of food, get trapped in a scene that no one has ever seen, or get mauled to death by a creature no one has ever known. Those possibilities, some of which are unique to our oddball landscape, are ones that petrify me to the core, and make me terrified of what's on tomorrow. These voids, however, constantly remind me to always get back up, continue fighting, and continue on fighting through whatever the future bears. While it's the content of the voids or lack thereof is not calming or zen, instead the fact that every time an individual returns upon falling into it is my driver for my new lease on the future and what it holds. The chain of events from one falling into the void to re-emerging back where they started is a mesmerizing cycle that reflects how I wish to be able to act in the face of the future. I wish should I I'd be suddenly plunged into a scary e scenario that embarrassed me to my knees, that I may be able to eventually get back on track to where I was before, having learned a new thing or two. It's a metaphorical connection only I myself have conjured and may come off as bizarre to many people, but it's in its own way to perceive beauty and zen for its landscape, and the way I set aside this indoor space from all the others that are similar in design to it. Entrances and Exits Leaving over the railing of level 54 and falling down the center for a considerable amount of time will eventually lead one to this level. No clipping through any bridge is made of carpet and level 63 will put one within level 371. Flying for lo long enough within level 198 will eventually bring one here. Exits Going into any visible air ducts along the skirting end of the of walls will go to level 96. Any staircases that heads upward will lead to level 280. Fighting islands of grass in the middle of the openings into the void are connected, that are connected by, to the floor by bridges will lead to level 149 or level 756. That was level 371, also known as Despondency. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, but I don't think we should I'd really worry about that. Just until then, it is time for us to say goodbye.